Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Out of the Park Baseball 25 with the San Francisco Giants. We are in the middle of year four and <clears throat> we made some changes in the last episode to how we had our pitching staff set up. For whatever reason, while Mason Miller was performing really, really well as a stopper, it was affecting the other pitchers. And I think that may have um, kind of threw everything out of throw everything out of whack a little bit. Um, so we went back and made Mason Miller the closer eighth or later, and it seems to have settled things down a little bit. We were 16 and 12 in June, so 16 and 12 in May, 16 and 12 in June. I'll take that back to back months. Uh, our pitching staff is up to fourth and runs against it was, I want to say eighth or ninth. I'd have to go back and look at the last episode, but eighth or ninth, uh, when, um, we ended, uh, May offensively, we're scoring runs fifth in the, in the national league and runs. I mean, the, the peripherals suggest that's not going to last when you look at everything else, but we're fifth and run scored. So we're getting it done. Um, we're starting to get healthy. We got both Matos and Manzardo back. Duran will be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, if you look at our team offensively, Vlad Guerrero, Nolan Jones, Royce Lewis, Dylan Carlson continue to lead the way for us offensively. Vlad's having a great season, already 73 RBIs, and it's July 1st. Um, Nolan Jones having a great year as well. He's on pace for a career season, 30 and 100. Royce Lewis done a really nice job, almost an 800 OPS, and he's been uh, really good at second base this year. Carlson has given us uh, – I moved Carlson to the top of the lineup at the last episode, and – uh, I think he did okay. What were his numbers like in June? 270, 360. Yeah, only a 360 slugging, but 360 uh, on base percentage out of your leadoff man. You take that any day of the week. Uh, Manzardo's back. Uh, he missed a while, uh, and he hasn't hit much since coming back, but uh, I think the the power is still there, especially against righties. I think he's going to be a good platoon. Matos is back from injury. Um, having a you know, obviously not anywhere close to last season, but, um, you know, if he can end up around 280, you know, with a 750, 760 OPS and plays good defense, well, you know, you'll take that. Trevino's not hitting, but we didn't expect him to. Luciano's probably trade bait. This might be the end of Marco Luciano uh, in um, in San Francisco. The just It's just not there. He's just not hitting enough for a first baseman. He's been fine at first base, but he's just not hitting enough. Um, Ortega, that average sits right at around 200. Yeah. So, I mean, offensively, we're still struggling a pretty bad season for Alec Thomas, given how well he did a year ago. So maybe a fourth outfielder is something we look to acquire here at the, at the trade deadline. Uh, financially, we've got a tiny bit of money, not much. Um, and then pitching wise, yeah, it's been a bit of a weird season. Logan Webb has been electric he's on pace for 21 seasons and over 240 innings pitch it's been a down year honestly for Kyle Harrison he is on pace for four wins but he's got an ERA over four right now so hopefully he bounces back in the second half of the season lazardo has been fantastic six and three 3.76 ERA we got him signed what for another year after this yeah so we may need to negotiate an extension for Mr. Lazardo. Canning has been a nice number four starter and Cease has been fine as our five 4.19 FIP, 74 Ks and 64 innings. You take that. Uh, Mason Miller has really been our only reliever. I guess Sapuki's been pretty good too, but other than that, it hasn't been great. So I'm thinking at a minimum, bullpen arm, fourth outfielder, and then if we can find an impact bat, we we, we take that as well. So, um, But that will be, let's look quickly at who's on the trade block, see if anything fits. I mean, there's some relievers here. There's some. Jax is out for four months. Duran is making $18 million. I mean, that would obviously be nice, but I think we're, we're thinking more peripheral for our, our bullpen. So we'll see if, if anything comes along as we get closer. And there's not really anything offensively yet. I mean, Bader isn't going to be that offensive upgrade, so I'm not, not worried about that. Cal Raleigh. Numbers have dropped for Cal over the last couple of seasons. So, yeah, nothing quite there yet. So let's just do some simming. We'll get up to the draft, and then once we get through the draft, we'll start taking a look, and taking a look at the deadline. So Miami. It's a 6-2 win. 
Get two hits, three RBIs from Lewis. Manzardo hits his first home runs. It's coming back from injury. Lazardo gives us six, picks up the win. Excellent. And we got a day off. What we got is this the Yankees or the Mets? It's the Yankees. All right. So the Brandon Woodruff against Griffin Canning on day on game one. Nine eight loss. Dylan Cease now in game two. Four three loss. So back to back one run losses. If we look to avoid the sweep, we do with a seven nothing win. Best game Kyle Harrison has pitched in quite some time. Five and a third. Oh, I take that back. He walked seven. We get home runs though from Vlad and Royce Lewis. Top top five hitters in the lineup all had two hits. Bottom four hitters all had none. And those are the five hitters we lean on, right? Matos, Lewis, Guerrero, Jones, and Carlson. All right, a couple more games before the draft. Back-to-back -back shutouts. Matos with his fourth home run of the season. Carlson, two hits, two RBIs. Logan Webb just throws an absolute metric ton of innings. Another game against the Astros. 14-1. to one. So our last three games have gone 7-0, 3-0, 14-1. to one. I'll take that. Manzardo with a huge game, four for five, five RBIs. Mato's starting to hit a little bit. Home runs in back-to-back -back games. Carlson homers and drives in three. You love to see that. Lazardo goes six and two thirds. Final game against Houston is a one nothing loss. All right, so we got San Diego now. Seven one win. We got the draft, so I'm going to hit end day and. We'll see that game, and then we'll do the draft. So uh, another couple hits from Matos. It's back up to league average. That OPS has gone up about 20 points in the first week and a half of the month. Lewis, two hits. Luciano, a couple of hits. Cease goes five and two-thirds. Oof, that's not good. A 10 nothing loss with Harrison on the mound. Yeah, he has not pitched well. That ERA up to 4.2. All right, so we do still have a two-game lead over the Dodgers, which is not great, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. Juan Soto hits his 300th home run. Otani hits his 300th home run. Just looking at his pitching numbers. He's been okay. Contract is still another seven years after this one. That's insane. All right. Now we got the draft. We're picking 28th, and there are some good names in this draft. This this is the first really loaded draft. Look at this guy. Oof. This is the first loaded draft with mostly uh, made-up people. So we'll go ahead and just send to our first pick. All right. So who do they think we should take? Dan Wright, the center fielder. And, yeah, he looks really darn good. Um, 65 contact, 60 pa gap power, 60 power, 50 I, 65 of avo avoid K can probably be moved to center field. He's got elite speed with a 17 year old. Who's a two way guy. 45, 55, 60. Wow. Um, all right. Anybody who's. Not a teenager. Bobby Horlacher, another two-way guy. Low work ethic, though. Let's get pitchers. Oof. Wow. Um, Paul Clark. I feel like we have to go offense. I mean, you never want to draft based off need, but like, um, ooh, what is Andres Barrera? Another two way guy. I feel like one of these pitchers will be here when we come back around. I'm curious what you guys would have done. I think though, I am going to take my scouts recommendation. High adaptability. I think we are going to go Dan Wright here, 18 years old, 
high adaptability, normal work ethic, but 65, 60, 60, 50, 65, 65 speed, 70 stealing. Um, and then that defense will come along. So I'm going to shortstop with 80 potential power. All right, we're going to take Dan Wright with the first pick. Let's go to our next pick. Head over to pitchers. Let's see how many of those guys were left. Barrera is still there. And that might be, that was the guy I was looking at. So Barrera is still there. He's a two-way guy. Fastball changeup sinker, 55, 55, 60 potential. I'm going to slide him in there. Uh, Bob Clark is a high work ethic guy. Ooh, he's only 5'10", though. Six foot. Wow. This is the high ceiling guy, right? 70 stuff, 50 movement, 60 control. I think Seamus Shamel Burgus. I like the fact that he's a two-way guy, but Burgus, I think, is just a better pitcher. It's stuff. 70, 50, 60 with four potential plus pitches. Yeah, we're going to take Shamel Burgess. Let's see if Barrera is still there. He's not. Okay, that's fine. Uh, still a lot of really good pitchers. I mean, look how well developed he is for an 18 year old, and he's 6'7. I think we're going to plop Maldonado in here, but then look at batters. At 80 potential shortstop, 80 potential power shortstop is still there. I mean, can you pass up on a potential 80 power bat at short? I don't think you can. Ah, I want Maldonado, though. Juan Maldonado, I think we're going to take him. He's six foot seven. He's only a 40 stamina, though. Parks, high loyalty, low leader. Furnace might be the guy. Doesn't throw particularly hard, but he's 6'4". Over the top, 60, 50, 55. Dusty Flores is an extreme ground ball pitcher. Yeah, he's not quite there. Ooh, this is tough. Because all five of these guys, I'm assuming, are gone by the by by our next pick. I mean, there's still a bunch of good pitchers in here. Mike Hayes is a 20 year old. I think we take the batter. I think we take the I think we take the the potential uh, 80 power uh, out of the shortstop position. Oscar Carney. I think that's what we're gonna do. And we'll bounce back to pitchers. And see what's left from all those players that we were looking at before. Furnace is still there. Okay. So is Maldonado. Can we get them both? Can we get Maldonado and then Furnace? We can't. All right. We got Ben Kimbrough. No. I think we might th be through the best of, I don't know, Eric Nelson. He's fragile, but 75, 50, 50. Yeah, Eric Nelson's going to be our next pick, and then we'll go back and we'll look at batters. Yeah, so this is the first really high-end draft, which is kind of neat. Uh, what do we got there? Mike Del Medico. High work ethic, 65 infield range already. Yep, I, I'm good with that. One of these catchers going to be here. He's an impossible sign. Ooh, Jake Thorpe, if he's still there with our next pick. I think that might be our selection. And he is. 
pretty good catcher for a 17 year old, 50 blocking and framing 65 arm, 55 contact, 45 gap, 55 power. Yeah. So that's, I like that high work ethic out of the catcher as well. Um, it's a really good draft. Bernie Lemus contact. Yeah. So 65, 50, 50, 50, 65. You can take Bernie Lemus. Let's go back to pitchers. Any other starters left? Alex Rubik. High adaptability, 55 stuff, 45 movement, 65 control. He's a little dude, but that looks okay. Uh, let's look at fielding ratings now. Shamar Lucky, 65 or 75 blocking, but the framing is no good. Jaheim Adewale, yep, you like players like that in your organization. Infield range, Steve, oh my gosh, Steve Bush, an electric glove. Take Bush and then Sanford if he's there with the next pick. He is. Outfield range, Chris Fountain. Wow. 17-year-old. That Those ratings look really good. I'm glad he's still hanging around. Uh, individual pitch potential. A lot of two-way guys in this draft. Only two pitches on all these guys. Splitter, Chris Brantley. Okay, I can get behind that. 70 potential change up in splitter, 70 potential stuff. I mean, if he ends up 70, 45, 45, and, and the pitch, oh, he's an impossible sign. Never mind. Never mind. What about Bobby Gaston? No, I don't like the control. Edgar Rosario, I don't like the control. Well, that's too bad. Juan Zedner. And we could probably take a shot on Zedner at this point. He's 18 with high work ethic and three potential elite, elite pitches. Is Jake Hampton going to be there with our next pick? He is, and he's going to be our guy at 17. Um, I guess we'll just go back to batting potential and see what we got. Um, Eric Cox, a first baseman with no power. Now Watson looks okay. He can play some defense. Had at least one skill that was in that high blue area. Let's go back to fielding. Looking mostly at high work ethic guys at this point. Sure. He's 22, probably never develops, but high work ethic is good. And I think we'll let the AI do the last couple of rounds. Relatively quick draft. But I had spent some time looking at some of those players previously. I'll negotiate. All right, so... We have $10 million. Let's go ahead and offer up to all the players who want more than their slot demand. So we'll make sure we get those locked in. Now we can sign everybody else. And we're probably going to have to do some culling of the minor leagues here a little bit. Yep. 
if you're in A ball and you are rule five eligible and you don't have any further development, you're going to get the boot. It's like the entire organization, but that's okay. I think it's like the entire roster. The entire A team from San Jose is, I'm going to keep Jaden Melendez because you like those, uh, um, you like those, uh, those types of catchers. They have three pitchers on their, on their team now. All right. So what does this do for us? All right. That'll work because we now have added some players to the roster. All right. Um, Let's go ahead and get through the day. Let's finish the series against San Diego. Come out with this eight, seven losses. Not good. Not good. Um, Alec Thomas to the minors. Duran. Stick Jaron back in the lineup. It's both lefties and righties, and I think we'll leave him towards the bottom of the lineup now. All right, so we've lost two in a row. We are a game up. Let's go ahead and save real quick. <clears throat> All right, now, again, trade block real quick, see if any... Yeah, there have been some names added. So fourth outfielder, relief pitcher, and then hopefully a, a, a impact bat. It doesn't look like there's a lot of impact bats, but there might be if we um, if we look at like upcoming free agents and stuff. Uh, all right, so fourth outfielder that can hit. Kyle Lewis can hit a little bit. How's he doing? He's been all right. I mean, would he be a better option? Jake Myers? Yeah, the problem with Jake Myers, oh, he actually hits better against lefties as, oh, he's a righty. Okay. Jake Myers might be that guy as our fourth outfielder. Let's talk to the Rockies. Cool. They don't want much at all. So, 25-year-old, will you retain? Let me put it this way. How much will you retain? Okay, so you need two bad players in order to retain it all. So, we're going to send 25-year-old Scott Bandura, who's currently out with an oblique strain. He's been stuck in A-ball for a couple of years along with Matt Higgins, 28-year-old who's in AA. In exchange, we're going to get Jake Myers. He's going to be the, the other side of our platoon, so he'll play center field against lefties. So let's go ahead and complete that trade. Um, who goes down to the minors, though? Otto Lopez, who has been absolutely awful this year. Jake Myers up into our lineups. Myers out there against lefties. Let's reset this. Myers, Bart. I don't know Bart starting every second game. He can't hit. Uh, Luciano every sixth game. Luciano every tenth game. Luciano every twelfth game. Um... Myers every sixth. Myers. We don't really need defensive replacements. Every third game. Cool. All right. So that pulls Duran out against lefty. So that solves the outfield, the fourth outfielder. Uh, let's now... Let's assume I had a couple of days. I don't want to make like four trades on the same day. 
Uh, let's get through this two game series here. First game is a three one loss. Scott Barlow is unhappy. So there's a nine eight win. We bounce back. <sighs> Take one out of two against the Angels. Nolan Jones three hits, four RBIs. Vlad three for four. Duran has a couple of hits. Canning doesn't pitch well. Miller gets the save. We had a couple of our um a couple of our guys react to their signing bonus. Carney, Bald, uh, Maldonado, and the Medico will disable the promotion for them. These guys are all fine there. How's Cam and Idiot? They moved him to the bullpen. All right, I'm going to call him up because he's 20. Uh, same thing with Adkins, I think. Yep, Adkins will get called up because he's 20. How's Zion doing? Not hitting particularly well, so we'll leave him there. Kellner, we'll call him up. Jaden Stroman is not hitting, but he's 20. I think we got to, it's time to, you know, blank or get off the pot, so to speak. Uh, Rigdon is hitting. We can call him up. All right. Uh, pitching. Uh, what am I looking for? Trade. I, I know there's like six different ways to get there. That's just how I chose to get there this particular time. All right. So bullpen. What's Abreu making? 10 million. Abreu's making 10. Duran's making 18. Laval's making 10. I mean, we could bring, oh, he's been bad. He's been bad. The fact that he's been bad, does that mean anything? No, you want one of my best players for a reliever. I am not going to do that. Fairbanks is making 18. Karen Chak is making 11. Diaz, 18. Chad Green is making 10. What is with the... I mean, I know there was an issue with, with the contracts. So I'm hoping they settle down here a little bit. Anel De Los Santos hasn't been good. Alexis Diaz hasn't been good. Caleb Ferguson has been pretty good. He's making eight million. Hamilton's been good. Extreme ground ball pitcher. Pick up Ian Hamilton. Okay. Well, there's, there's something there. So what are we willing to give up to bring in Ian Hamilton? We made Eldridge an outfielder. How's he done since we made him an outfielder? I mean, he's, he's raking. I don't know that he ever fully develops, but um, we may actually stop his two-way. Doesn't really change anything. So straight up, it's a lot of middling talent, which I think is to be expected because he hasn't been good. So what if we add in Bolivar is the number 77 prospect in baseball. What if we add in Eldridge? He's the number 100 prospect in the game. Does that change things? It looks like it does. We could bring in Max Wagner, who was somebody we were looking at previously. But, I mean, even he's not great. Prado. We do need a catcher. We do need a catcher. Uh, 
Um, Hassel's not as good as he would appear. Just out of curiosity, does that... I mean, that gives us some prospects. Let's do this. On Grissom from the Red Sox. Nope. I mean, Wagner might be that guy. Spencer Steer, no. Most of these guys aren't like I mean, they're not bad hitters. Like, Bernabelle's not a bad hitter. Um, Stovall's a good contact guy. That average is predicated specifically on that average. Gilbert? No. He's good, but he's also disruptive. Like, he would be a really good fit, but he's disruptive, and I don't want to add that to the team. Naiz, Ruiz, Clark, McRae, no. Rojas, I think is yeah, not a power guy. I don't need a power guy, but I'm Holly is injured. I don't want to make San Diego better this year if I can help it. Relvis Martinez, he's got some pop, but he basically is the same hitter as, uh, as uh, Luciano. Rovas, kind of contact guy. Kebe Ruiz, no. Crooks isn't bad as a catcher. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, is there anybody on the big league roster that I would be willing? There's not really anybody on the big league roster that I want to get rid of necessarily. Um. All right. Well, let's sim ahead a couple more days. Ooh, look at this, Andrew Painter. Wow. That's quite a season. All right. That's who we're facing today. It's Kyle Harrison against Andrew Painter. And, of course, we win 6-3 to three because that's how this game works. Did Harrison pick up the win? Six shutout innings. Miller gets the save. 20th home run of the year for Vlad. He drives in two. Carlson drives in two. Let's get to the All-Star game, and then we'll figure out how to improve our bullpen. And if we were to get rid of somebody, yeah, it's Howard or, I mean, I don't want to get rid of Barlow. He was, we paid him a lot of money, but if we can get rid of Howard and then bring in somebody to kind of push everybody down the list a little, I think that would be helpful. All right. Next game is a 6-3 loss and the final game for the All-Star break. It's a 9-2 loss. So not a great month so far. We are still in first place by a game, but that's it. Um, yeah, I mean, my, I'm just, we're just not pitching. So we need to find a, a pitcher that one, ooh, ooh, Kodai Senga, pitcher that we can afford. Let's, let's focus. Let's focus. Nariharu Nakashima, $12 million arbitration number. No, thank you. Ooh, it is raining outside right now. Kevin Ginkle. He looks okay. 
trying to make this work without giving up a, 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 a big league piece, right? That's the ultimate goal. All right. So our other players have, um, signed their agreement. Does Adkins change things at all? He doesn't. What about Adkins and Caminiti? Ortega. I mean, I'm not all, I'm not against trading Ortega, but we certainly would need a, a different shortstop option if we were to make that work. I mean, they got Lynn Dore at short. I don't know why they want Ortega. Um, Luis Angel Acuna. Play all over the diamond, but he's not really a shortstop. Um, do we give up on our first overall pick? First overall draft pick. We do that and then remove Hartle. Nope. Um, all right, so maybe Ginkle isn't the answer. I liked Hamilton. But they wanted, I mean, hmm. We turn this into something like, well, he's a 60 overall. It's not going to, yeah. I was thinking maybe do something with Ritter and Ortega, but that's it's going to be too much. Um, oh, excuse me. Romo. Okay, so the teams are really keen on holding on to their relievers for some reason. And I'm keen on holding on to my prospects. So there we are. Colin Holderman. He's been quite good. Okay, so we're starting in a better place here. So let's start with Adkins. So those two guys really haven't changed things at all. O'Neill Perez is going to be up next year as one of our closers, or as one of our catchers, rather. Hartman? None of those guys change things at all from a, uh, a, a player, pers from a, 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 a San Diego perspective. And I'm not prepared to give anybody else up. That's the problem. All right. Um, it's hard to give up somebody who's got 65 power, 60 I, and can play a pretty good outfield. Can't pitch anymore, but yeah, it's weird. The, the, the demand, the asking price for a, a, a reliever is pretty damn high. Um, Jackson's having a pretty good season. <sighs> um, yeah, I'm looking for, there's got to be a, a reliever here where the team is looking, is literally just looking to move them and... Rand's making 6.9... Like, this feels like that kind of player. He's making $7 million. And, yeah, like, that's a little better. I mean, he hasn't been good, like, his entire 
major league career, making a lot of money to, to be average. Um, Stevenson? Okay. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. All right. Here. You want Alfredo Oregon? Absolutely. How much of that can we return? So they sign this year and next. 7.3 this year, 7.3 next. Oh, wow. Okay. So they won't retain any of it. What if I ask them to retain 50? Ah, oh, come on. <sighs> All right, what if we do this a different way? What if we take this off and we ask for cash? Let's just do that. Let's ask for $4 million. And then $3 million. $2 million. I just, I don't know. He's 34 and he's making 7 million next year. And I guess I'm okay with that. All right, that's fine. I think I'm okay with this. So what does that do financially for us? We've got $55 million next season. So we're going to have less but that is okay. Let's go ahead and complete that deal. Bring in a popular player and Spencer Howard. I think he has to be DFA'd, right? Yep. Howard is going to be DFA'd. Bring up Robert Stevenson. Make him our second setup man. And then Barlow can actually go to middle relief with Bummer as the second setup man slash middle relief. Stevenson will come in seventh or later. Okay, so now we are Miller, Bummer, Stevenson in our back three. Um, so our top four relievers look okay. Um, so we've dealt with the bullpen issue, I think, and we've dealt with the fourth outfielder issue, bringing in Jake Myers. Um, now we're just going to sim ahead a couple of days and see if potentially there is a, um, you know, I say impact bat, but I don't, I don't know what that would, what that would entail at this point. Um, uh, let's go ahead and lock these guys down. Transaction, disable AI promotion. So right was our top pick. Uh, we'll leave him in center for now. And Burgess was our second overall pick and not a great start to his professional career, but that's okay. Uh, Maldonado was our fourth round pick. He's made a couple of starts so far, 14 Ks and in nine innings. Sim a couple of days. Anything interesting happen in the all-star game? Oh, who made the all-star team? We didn't even look at that. American League, Castillo, Crawford, Flores, Gallon, Kirby, Sheehan, Wu, Woods, Richardson. Uh, Joe Boyle made it, really, with a 6.19 earned run average. National League, we had Logan Webb make it. It says he's injured. He's not injured. Logan Webb made it. Isaac Coffey made it. Mason Miller made it. So for all the hemming and hawing, we had three pitchers make the all-star team. Vlad Guerrero made it, and that's it. So three pitchers and Vlad make the all-star team. All right, let's get through the end of the week.
Hang on just a second, guys. Uh, let's get to the Detroit series and, and then we'll see. I mean, I don't, I don't know that we're going to be able to make any sort of big time offensive deal. Um, shortstop catcher, you know, those are all positions that, that would probably, those are probably the positions that I would look at upgrading. I mean, maybe shortstop is the answer. I mean, who's going to be, who's up for free age? Who's, who are our upcoming free agents? Do we have any, any names that we can look at? Not really. Um, I mean, William Contreras might be an option to catch her next year. I mean... Want one of my best best players for William Contreras and Muckett. Yeah, they got Jefferson Cuero ready to go. Holy hell. Okay. Eric Nelson, our fifth round pick, already hurt. He was fragile, so not a surprise. Um Trying to get this down. Yeah, okay. I was thinking maybe make a deal for an upcoming free agent, but it doesn't look like there's much in the way of, I mean, there's, I mean, is, is Cal Rally an, an option for us? He's obviously a much better offensive bat. If we re, if we ask them to retain like sixty five percent of it, yeah, it's just so we have the money to the money to um, we only played twenty seven games this year, really. Uh, okay. They'll take him for Dylan Adkins straight up. Okay. And retain 7. 75% done. Let's make that happen. Uh, from a catching perspective, Joey Bart now. I think this is the end of the line for Mr. Bart. Get Mr. Rally back in there. And I think he becomes our starter, honestly. Becomes our starting catcher because he's good I mean, he's good enough defensively. Yeah, and Trevino's actually dipped, so Trevino's not nearly as good. And if Raleigh has a nice end of the season for us, maybe we bring him back. But at least now we have that option. What does he want as, a, as an extension? Yeah, I'm not going to pay him $10 million, but we can see how he does and then go from there. Uh, all right, so we've added Cal Raleigh, Jake Myers, and Robert Stevenson to our team here this month. Nothing that's going to put us over the top, but I think those are solid additions to the team. Uh, Lewis goes two for four. Carlson two for four. Luciano's still hanging around. Still hanging around. Harrison continues to get beat up. I don't like that. Um, I guess we just hang on to Marco for now. And that average is up to 240. I mean, we need we need this, right? I mean, if he can give us 788 with 15 home runs, 15 to 20 home runs, I think we take it. But, um, yeah, not yet. All right. Game two against Detroit. 5-1 loss in the game of the series. 5-2 loss. All right, so we are tied for first place now with Los Angeles and Arizona. 
We got Miami coming up to finish the season. Spencer Howard, DFA, he refuses to be demoted. All right, well, cool. Trade him for Andrew Vaughn? Sure. Cool. We leave Andrew, I mean, maybe Vaughn, I mean, Andrew Vaughn at least gives us a bat. Miami now. Another loss. Another loss. And another loss. So we have now gone 8 and 13 in the month of July. So all of that goodwill that we made up in May and June has gone sideways here in the last 10 games. We're game out of first place. We are half a game out of the wild card. Um, I don't know. Raleigh's only three for 19 since coming over. Stevenson has walked three and given up a run. Um, I mean, this isn't a pitching staff thing, is it? Pitching coach is Michael McClain. We literally hired him this year, and he hasn't been good. He hasn't been good. What options do we have for a pitching coach? Maybe we fire our pitching coach at the end of the season here. Anderson Polanco works with power pitchers, average relationships, Mike Maddox. He's got good relationships. Does he want to be our pitching coach? He does not. Matt Blake was the Yankees pitching coach. Only a fair relationship with Lazardo. Chris Bazio, old school. We're going to bring in Chris Bazio as our pitching coach and see if that changes things. Yeah, I knew our, our run scored was gonna was gonna drop here. I mean, our pitching staff's gotten better. We're up to, to second in the in the National League and runs allowed first in bullpen ERA. So our pitching staff has gotten better. It's it's our offense that continues to be brutal. So maybe we don't. Maybe let's go in here and uh, what am I doing? We're going uh, available personnel and pending offers. We're going to pull this offer from Chris Bazio, uh, free agent. Let's look at all personnel. Maybe there's a, 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 a hitting coach that we can steal from somebody. These guys are all in the majors. Charleston Dirty Birds. Um, Encarnacion. Not interested in working for us. Yeah, I mean, it's Joey DeMonte, right? He's the GOAT, but uh, um, and it's not working. And I guess we just, does Horace Lawrence want to come work for us? He doesn't. I guess we just stick with our coaches for now. Um, one more, is there a shortstop on the block. He's on Kim making 20 million bucks. I don't think so. I think this is our team to see us through the end of the season. So let's go ahead and sim deadline day. I know the deadline has not been completed and we lose again. <sighs> Shoot. All right. So we're two games out of first place. We were a game up or something like that. It was just a bad month. Lazardo's stamina drops. Villa Diego. I don't know who this guy is. He gets better, though. Eldridge gets better. Stroman gets better. Not a good month. Not a good month for us at all. We're 55 and 51, second in the National League in runs against, 10th in runs scored, it, which is weird because, I mean, this year, it really has been a have-and-have-nots have kind of thing. Like, we have four hitters who are doing 
who are performing really, really well. And then everybody else has been just trash, right? Ortega has been awful. Duran has been awful. Uh, Luciano has literally been league average. Raleigh is three for 19. Jake Myers has no hits in 12 at bats since we picked him up. There's something about San Francisco, man. Uh, Manzardo hitting a little bit. So hopefully, you know, as he starts to get more comfortable playing, I mean, Vlad, Jones, Lewis, and Carlson are carrying us. Um, but it's not enough. It's just not enough. So I'm going to go ahead and call it here. Let me know how you think we did at the deadline. Let me know how you think we did in the draft. I'm going to sim up to probably the middle of September or so, and then we'll come back and we'll do the rest of the regular season, hopefully a postseason and the offseason episode. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate the support. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.